2007 is where my Call of Duty story begins. After years of shooters based on historical wars, gamers were ready for a change. So Infinity Ward looked at the series up to that point and decided to redefine what Call of Duty was. I remember running home from school with a Modern Warfare beta code in my inbox, rushing inside and waiting several hours for my DSL internet to download like six or seven gigs. But then it happened. After everything I'd seen about this new modern take on Call of Duty, I knew I had to play this game, and it didn't disappoint. While the Call of Duty series has definitely been criticized, it's safe to say the first few games were considered classics. But once they found the winning formula of Call of Duty 4, they stuck with it, going with the old, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. World at War took the new formula back to World War II and introduced the highly popular Zombies game mode. Modern Warfare 2 improved in many ways, but clearly focusing more on the action and spectacle. With Black Ops, Treyarch brought their own feeling to the series, helping them stand out from Infinity Ward's previous offerings. Modern Warfare 3 started to show a lack of originality in the formula. Black Ops 2 started moving the series into future tech and expanding the zombies mode. Everyone says Ghost was the bad one, but it was again the same formula as all the others. And the first game on what was then next-gen consoles, PS4 and Xbox One. Advanced Warfare leaned even further into sci-fi with robots, drone swarms, and jump jets. Black Ops 3 also integrated the jump jets with wall running, making it stand out in the series gameplay-wise, whether that's a good thing or bad. Infinite Warfare did the same, but nobody played that, so who cares, but the campaign was actually pretty cool. World War II tried bringing the series back to its original setting and thus removing the sci-fi elements, and Black Ops 4 continued this gameplay trend, removing most future elements and introducing the popular trend of Battle Royale. Approaching the drop zone. As you can see, Call of Duty has had one hell of a ride, with new games pumped out every year for over a decade. Despite that, the series has been a bit directionless the last few years, trying to recapture that magic that started this whole trend in the first place. So that brings us here to 2019 and the beta for the latest Call of Duty game, Modern Warfare. Nope. Nope. There you go. When I heard they were making a Call of Duty game called Modern Warfare, I thought it was a joke. We just did this a couple years ago. But the more I heard about the game as a return to form for the series, and more of a soft reboot to the Modern Warfare IP, it got my attention. When the first gameplay was shown off back in July, I was really impressed with the weight of the guns and the seemingly more realistic gameplay style they were going for. I mean, this is still Call of Duty, a running gun action series, but the direction they took looked interesting. Now what I really find interesting is the many parallels this game seems to have with another Modern Warfare title. Excuse me for repeating myself, but that's kind of the point of this, so here we go. After years of shooters based on historical wars, gamers are ready for a change. So Infinity Ward looked at the series up to this point and decided to redefine what Call of Duty is. Last weekend I rushed to the office to play the Modern Warfare beta that was already preloaded this time, you know, the future's cool and all. After everything I'd seen about this new, modern take on Call of Duty, I knew I had to play this. And you know what? It didn't disappoint. The new Modern Warfare's gameplay is exceptionally fun and engaging, in a way Call of Duty hasn't felt since 2007. This game feels like an alternate reality version of the Call of Duty series. In 2007, Activision assumed people liked Call of Duty for its action, and that's the direction the series took. Every year, going further and further down the rabbit hole, adding dual-wielding shotguns, jetpacks, wall running, dancing, taunts, and even Nazi zombies. Sounds like someone breaking in! It's just a storm, dick. Sit down. Look, I know there are tons of people who love Nazi zombies, and I'm not even saying it's bad. It's just so weird that my serious military shooter game has zombies in it. Our so-called leaders prostituted us to the West, destroyed our culture, our economies, our honor. Changes like this took the series from a somewhat serious modern military shooter and turned it into a joke. With each game, it got harder and harder to ignore these silly additions that made it feel immature or trying way too hard to be cool. 
Now, here comes Modern Warfare 2019 on a different branch, taking the series in a slightly more realistic direction and building on it with new gameplay and features instead of silly gimmicks. The very first thing I noticed when playing was the weight of your character and weapon animations. Modern Warfare still has that Call of Duty punch to everything, from the weapon's power to movement speed and quick time to kill, but this time wrapped around a more modern and realistic gameplay style. You can still run and gun here, but I found it more enjoyable to slow down a bit, peek around corners, and let the enemies come to me. I know many people have criticized the game for that, saying it encourages people to stay still in camp. But to me, it's okay to slow down a bit and pick your targets carefully. The door mechanics are especially intuitive, allowing you to peek through a door when aimed down sights, and even throw flashbangs through the door. Can I peek? Hang on, I'll try something. Can I peek the door and do this? Yes! That's awesome! And then you can bust in. That is so really cool. It's no Rainbow Six. You're still running around blowing people away, but it's not Black Ops 3 either. Speaking of which, the engagement range is also greatly reduced from recent games. One of my biggest problems with the increased movement of games like Black Ops 3 was just how small every target seemed to be. That's not awful for that type of game, but if I'm playing a modern military shooter, I more often than not want to be dealing with close quarters combat. It's funny to think it's been 12 years since the original Modern Warfare, and now that's outdated warfare, and the new game has more drones and future things than that game was even thinking about. Speaking of modern technology, Call of Duty finally has some of its own, with a new engine, and it runs really well, even in the beta. Call of Duty was always criticized for using an outdated engine that still shared elements from 1999's Quake 3. You're on offense. Roger. The games never really looked bad and did run at a mostly solid 60 FPS, but you could tell its age in certain spots and a change was clearly needed. Not only does this new engine look objectively better than any Call of Duty game before it, but it runs extremely well even on mid-range hardware. Start the clear! I remember playing Black Ops 4's beta and struggling to get just 60 FPS, while Modern Warfare's beta is usually over 100. The engine seems to do a great job scaling from just a few players to a whole battlefield of players with similar performance. Did any of you guys see the N64 looking dudes when you first loaded into the menu? What is that? What the f is that? Overall though, the game is gorgeous. I love near the end of console generations when games really start pushing the hardware, and on PC you can start to see a glimpse of what the next gen will look like. Battlefield 3 was the biggest example last gen, with it barely running on the Xbox 360 and PS3. Modern Warfare isn't nearly as bad, featuring the same basic experience as on PC, but you can definitely see the consoles starting to sweat a bit. So, a few moments ago, I dropped the word you've all been waiting to hear. Battlefield. It's no secret that Call of Duty and Battlefield have had a bit of a rivalry over the years because of their similar genre. The closest Battlefield got to challenging the Call of Duty behemoth was from 2011 to 2013, with the releases of Battlefield 3 and 4. But in recent years, the Battlefield series has had a similar identity crisis to Call of Duty, with Battlefield 1 and 5 failing to capture what made the series great in the first place. <laughs> So why do I bring this up? Well, here comes Call of Duty with a new large-scale game mode called Ground War, hoping to attract that lost Battlefield audience. I didn't know what to expect before Ground War was made available. Very little gameplay was shown, only telling us that it would be 64-player game modes on bigger maps with drivable vehicles. But when I hopped into my first Ground War match on Friday night, I just sat there and said, they did it. They did it. You crazy son of a bitch, you did it. They just turned Call of Duty into Battlefield. They f***ing did it. At a glance, Ground War looks like a Battlefield game. A big map with several objectives to capture, squad mates to spawn on, tanks rolling in, and silly ragdolls that make great highlight reels. 
a huge franchise just said, hey, you guys aren't giving your players what they want, so we're gonna do it. Now, I know Activision doesn't really deep down care about the gamers, but they saw an opening in the market and went for it. I keep seeing comments that say, I haven't played a Call of Duty game since, insert year here, but I might have to pick this one up. So it appears to be working out for them. Ground War definitely has its own feeling from a traditional Battlefield game, with the pace cranked up to 11 by those standards. Respawns are mere moments instead of the eternity it can take in Battlefield games, so matches go by much quicker. The addition of killstreaks into this type of game mode also means there's always something going on, like an attack helicopter or predator missile or Enemy AC 130 above! There's four-wheelers, tanks, APCs, little birds, and because of all these vehicles, launchers finally have a purpose in Call of Duty, other than just shooting a random UAV in the sky every once in a while. At the beginning of one match, I saw someone hop out of a helicopter and pull a parachute, and I was like, wait, I didn't even think of that, so I ran upstairs to the closest building and jumped out the first window I saw and... Yeah, they even did that too. Only one Ground War map was featured in the beta, but it's a unique map to this mode and not just an extended version of a Team Deathmatch map. It was a little smaller than your average Battlefield map, but to me that was a good thing. With this smaller scale, they densely packed the map with tons of explorable buildings and objects to use as cover. Inside buildings are so much more detailed instead of just being an empty room with a chair or two and a desk. I rarely found myself out in the open being shot from 100 meters away. I was instead moving in and out of buildings, making my way from objective to objective, and to me that's perfect. If they do end up putting a battle royale mode in this game, I hope the maps are designed like this. It always baffled me that Blackout was a big open map in a series about close quarters combat. The vehicles I tried out lack weight to them, and when driving around they seem very rigid and, and, and stiff. And while entering them is easy enough, no animation like the more recent battlefields but you just pop in, they don't let you exit the vehicle in the direction you're looking. This was something very convenient in Battlefield and made it a lot easier to escape from a vehicle if you were about to blow up. Oh, and most of all, the spawn points were f***ed. Not every spawn point is bad, but these two buildings where players seem to gather the most was just a slaughterhouse. I know it's a beta, so I'm just saying something needs to be done about those before the full release in this map or anything that's similar. Otherwise, though, I had a blast with this game mode, and it really feels like the Battlefield game people have been clamoring for. Battlefield excels at large-scale combat, but can scale down to a decent team deathmatch experience. And Call of Duty excels at close quarters combat, but can now scale up to a decent large scale experience. So I welcome this competition to the market, not only to shake things up for the Call of Duty series, but Battlefield as well. I just hope this new push from Modern Warfare really lights a fire under DICE and EA to come back swinging with Battlefield 6. We'll just have to wait and see, but right now I'm really excited for the full release of Modern Warfare in September, and oh, I wanted to say, I hope they stick with this game for a little bit longer than, you know, a year. I know they canceled the usual season pass for this game, so I hope that means they're letting it grow a bit instead of just replacing it with the next one next year. I hope they pull a Rainbow Six Siege and just keep working on and improving this game because it's really solid and not just throw it out next year for a new Call of Duty title. Well, that's it from me. Let me know what you guys thought. If you got to play the beta this weekend, did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Is it the worst? Is it the best? Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you on the next one.